Train the muscles, not the joints. Hey guys, welcome back to another live workout. I have already finished training legs. I did some one-legged squats for both four sets and then I superset it with uh, uh, some deep squats. You guys would be pr uh, proud of me, but just body weight just on the bottom just to stretch out all the muscles and stuff. So I was doing that just to pump blood in there and, and uh, it's almost like a uh, pump and stretch principle in a certain way. Uh, but yeah, I'm always experimenting, playing around with stuff. I also found a couple different movements for uh, people who want to let's just say do a leg extension type of exercise, but they don't have access to a leg extension and they're in a home gym. So one of these days I'll show you guys that stuff too. And I also found a way to do seated curls at home or, or sorry, seated calf raises at home, uh, which is, uh, yeah, I don't know why that never occurred to me before, but uh, I guess I just wasn't that interested, but I started doing it. <laughs> so again, so I'll show that to you guys in another video as well. But yeah, first of all, I was doing some one leg squats. Uh, got a good pump and everything, got a bit of a sweat going because if you guys know where I live, I live in Western Canada. It's pretty hot right now. Uh, I'm in Harrison Hot Springs. If you guys never been here, you should come. One of these days you should come uh, and I'll, uh, yeah, just message me and I'll, I'll come see you, come visit you or whatever. But anyway, I'm going to do some chest now and I'm going to warm up. I already warmed up with uh, 30 pound dumbbells, just uh, just a stupid little warm up just to get through the, go through the motions. And then I'm going to work my way up to 100 pound dumbbells, right? So I could go heavier. Some of you guys are asking me why I go light or high reps. I don't, the, the question is not really relevant because the problem is people will watch one exercise vlog and then they'll assume that's the weight I use all the time or that's the rep range I use all the time. And the truth is, is that I change things up depending on how I feel. Now, I would be lying if I said I did heavy all the time. And I'd be lying if I said I did heavy with every single movement because there's some movements I find uh, tweak, you know, the body, right? Or give you muscle pulls and tears if you're going heavy. And then there's other movements that I find work really well for my body. Now that's of course because of my own individual situation, you know, uh, a lot of you guys who have been here know uh, that I have been through some sports injuries and stuff like that. So sometimes I work with them accordingly. Uh, but that doesn't mean I never go heavy. Like for instance, on bench presses, You'll see me go heavy from time to time, like five reps, six reps. Then I'll go back to 12 reps or 10 reps. And then I'll do sets of 25 reps sometimes. And then I'll go back down to six reps. You know, I'll mess around like that. Uh, bent over rows, I usually keep above 10 reps because I can do some pretty heavy weight. And uh, I find it becomes so hard on the lower back at that point. It's just not really worth the risk. And at the same time, I get all the benefit I want out of the rep ranges I'm looking for, uh, for back. Now, when it comes down to legs, I also usually stay above 10 reps to 15 reps. And of course, the definition of failure, whenever you're including lower back in your movements, is different than, say, doing bicep curls. Because say you're doing bicep curls, it's muscular failure. Like, you just can't do another rep. Okay, fine. That's muscular failure. But if you wait till your lower back muscles fail during squats or deadlifts or, or some sort of movement like bent over rows, what will happen is the muscles that are responsible for protecting your lower back will stop doing so and therefore you'll get an injury. So this is why you don't want to hit real failure when it comes down to those movements. You have to be a little bit more conservative or let's just say uh, more strategic. Let's just, that, that, that would be a better word, more strategic. And that's why you see a lot of the professional bodybuilders, a lot of times they would do their quad work. You know, they do leg extensions, they do leg curls, they might do some leg presses and then they do squats after they pre fatigued the legs. The reason why they do that is because they want to make sure during their squat workout that the legs were hitting failure and that their lower back was fresh to maintain proper form to the whole thing. So they could push their legs to failure, but not, or, or at least close to failure anyway. I mean, they obviously wouldn't collapse or anything, but they'd make sure that their lower back could maintain safety on the spine and so forth. So it's, it's gonna be a feel thing, but trust me, I push myself hard in certain circumstances that I've learned which ones not to push through and which one's too push through. And sometimes it takes time to figure that out. And I pray that it's a very easy, obstacle-free path for you. Uh, you don't have to go through the same crap I did. You know, so that's, what, that's why I'm making these videos. So that way you guys don't have to make the same mistakes. And you know what? I'm, I'm building an army of warriors that one day when I'm a feeble guy, hopefully I'm never feeble, but you know what? Uh, it, it, it's good to build an army of people that'll protect me. Once you guys have big muscles, you'll be all strong. Then maybe one day, you know, I'll need your help and you'll come to the aid. You know what I'm saying? So 
Yeah, that's how it works. You know what I'm saying? It's the cycle of life, right? One day you're a lion, next day you're you're like a fertilizer. You know what I'm saying? So that's just the way it is. <laughs> so, so anyway, I'm gonna warm up with some uh, 70 pound dumbbells and then I'll move up. <clears throat> I'm doing a pretty shallow angle, not steep, on purpose. I like this for some reason. See, when I come down to here, sometimes I get a cranking. So sometimes I'll just make sure I don't bring the shoulder blades back on incline. That's the other thing. When I bring the shoulder blades back and stick the chest out on inclines, I find I get a bit more delt, but I don't necessarily get as much tension on the pec, right? So it's interesting, right? So uh, play around with what you do with your shoulder girdle when you're doing inclines and see which one maintains more tension on the chest. You might be surprised. Excuse me. I had... Uh, five eggs and uh, uh, a scoop or a cup of oatmeal uncooked and a bunch of blueberries. And I put some sweetener on it and that's my breakfast usually. So sometimes it's moving through me during the workout. <laughs> I give myself a little bit, of, okay, this is the other thing. When I warm up, I give myself a bit of rest because just going bang, 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 bang into the movements, it's like, it's gonna be more like cardio fatigue or uh, creatine fatigue and I do want to make sure my muscles have enough energy to be able to push and, and to be able to get as much reps as I can so it's okay to rest a couple minutes you know especially after doing legs because you guys those of you that do know I used to personal train people and I used to measure their heart rate on the bike and stuff and it never failed every day that we did leg day the, the rest of the workout that person's heart rate was elevated by at least five to 10 beats per minute. Usually it was about 10 to 12, somewhere around there. And so if they, they did legs like squats or leg presses or lunges or whatever it was, when they went to ride the bike at the end of the workout, their heart rate was still elevated. So sometimes that makes a difference in how you feel after you train legs. So don't be surprised if you might need a little bit more rest in between sets after you train legs and say you're moving on to another body part or something. So uh, that's just how it is. So many awesome tips and these things that I know a lot of times it's hard to come up with a clickable title for this stuff, but usually I, I, I honestly impress myself sometimes. The stuff that I come up with to you guys is <laughs> funny, right? Because you know you just can just talk in the moment and then sometimes say some things that uh, you might forget when it comes down to filming in front of the camera and say, okay, I gotta make a, a video on a certain subject. Sometimes just bullshitting as you go through the motions, sometimes better stuff comes out, I think. Now, again, I could have went down a little bit farther, but I'm playing around with something because, you know, sometimes you come around full circle. There's a time and place for full range, and then there's a time and place for constant tension. So I feel when I go down to here, it's chest when I'm coming up on an incline. When I go down a bit lower, then the shoulder starts to crank around and I start to put a lot of stress on the delts. So honestly, I'll do shoulder press for delts. I need more upper chest. That's, you know, it just feels right too, right? Sometimes what feels right is the right thing. Not always, but sometimes. After all, that's how you got here, right?
here we go. Track those, those puppies, right? So, yeah, we'll do three to five sets of that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's basically a good chest workout. Now, of course, it always depends on the frequency I'm doing. Whether I'm doing a two-day split or whether I'm doing a whole body workout or or sometimes, you know, once in a while, three-day split or something. So that's always going to be uh, a factor that plays a role, right? Oh, one more set. I'll just do one more. One more. <sighs> yeah, it's funny how uh, something like just an angle, if you're on an incline or a flat, how that can also change which range of motion hits your chest more. So a lot of guys don't, uh, don't make adjustments based on that. They just assume, oh, a press is a press, or if it's incline or flat, it's the same, or Worst case scenario, they just assume full range of motion all the time, no matter what. And that's just definitely not the truth, you know? So that's all I've got to say about that. One more set. So this will be my fourth set, I believe. So four sets. Uh, I plan on doing five, but once again, I always go on how my body feels. And it feels like I've, I've hit that kind of fatigue level, or at least I'm pretty close. And then, uh, yeah, then I'll stop that and then I'll get on to my next body part. But uh, for the purposes of this video, this will be my final exercise, or, or at least my final set. And then, yeah, let me know if you guys like this kind of structure of me kind of talking about certain subjects, but uh, then training at the same time, if you like this more uh, than me wandering through the woods and uh, killing monsters, because sometimes that's necessary, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the point of having big muscles if I don't go out and destroy a few monsters? Nice, final set, done. Hey, okay. mountain. So, uh, thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. If you want to uh, listen to me ramble about this kind of stuff, training, life, how to get bigger, tune into the Patreon podcast. Link is in the description. Mountain. <laughs>